could the Baltimore Ravens sign yet another starting cornerback? Well, according to CBS Sports, they have been named as a very, very good potential landing spot for this Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, and somebody who I call the Cam Newton of corners in the NFL. So let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video, click that thumbs up button, and also subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on because I don't want you missing out on anything. So CBS Sports said the Baltimore Ravens are one of four teams that are considered the best landing spots for free agent cornerback Stephon Gilmore. And I called him the Cam Newton of cornerbacks, and let me tell you why. Let's read it. He said, this is a quote from him, there are still some good corners and safeties out there like Justin Simmons and myself that are still not signed. Let me stop you right there. Maybe he needs to be a Baltimore Raven because the first safety that he mentioned was Justin Simmons. Hey, we on the same page already. But anyway, continuing. Uh, he said, honestly, I'm still being patient and staying ready until teams see what they have in training camp. But you mean to tell me, this is the Cam Newton part right here. You mean to tell me among 32 teams that there are 64 starting corners that are better than me? I don't think that. If teams want to win, I think they should sign the best players. I know I'm still a starter in this league. I started games last year, but the season doesn't start until September. So we got a while. And yeah, we certainly do got a while. But would the Baltimore Ravens be a good fit for Stephon Gilmore? Well, first, what, who are the other teams that they linked to Stephon Gilmore? Well, there were the Cowboys, there were the Chiefs, and there were the Lions. But we ain't worried about them. How does CBS Sports see him fitting in with the Ravens? This is what they had to say. The Ravens were the NFL's number one defense in 2023, but... Attrition on both their coaching staff and their roster has Baltimore set to, to incredibly different defensively in 220, 2024. One of those positions includes cornerback opposite Marlon Humphrey. Both Rocky Sin, he went to the 49ers, and Ronald Darby went to the Jaguars, have departed for greener pastures, which is why last season's AFC runner-up utilized his first-round draft choice, 30th overall, on Clemson cornerback Nate Wiggins. Gilmore, along with Humphrey, could prove to be two great mentors for Wiggins. Plus, teaming up with two-time NFL MVP quarterback Lamar Jackson would allow the 12-year vet to remain in the Super Bowl hunt in his 13th season. Well, wait a minute. I see everything that you're saying, CBS Sports, but I can tell that you don't really know too much about the Baltimore Ravens. And I get it. It's tough because y'all got to cover every single team in the league. I respect it. But something that you forgot to mention, something that you failed to bring up in this article, well, you did make some great points, and those would be some great mentors for Nate Wiggins while he comes up in the league. We have another starter at outside corner in Brandon Stevens. And he was nothing short of amazing last year. Amazing. So while like a Stefan Gimmel, like this would be a move that I would do in Madden. Just really just going crazy with it in the secondary, having as many quality corners as I possibly can because depth is a thing. Injuries are unfortunately a thing. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready is a thing as well. But Stephon Gilmore with the Baltimore Ravens right now is just, ah, it probably ain't the best fit right now because he considers himself a starter and he is a starter, but with the Baltimore Ravens, like where would he fit in at? Like, are you going to start him over Marlon Humphrey? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't ask that because I know some of y'all be like, well, yeah, I sure would, buddy. Would you start him over the up-and-coming Brandon Stevens? Would you? I'm just kidding. Maybe some of y'all might. Who knows? But with Nate Wiggins, too, your first-round draft pick. Like, it, it, it would be nice to have a Stephon Gilmore. I mean, he, but I feel like he would be more of a luxury at this point than a necessity. So, as far as Stephon Gilmore possibly being with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pass on this one. Now, somebody who I'm so glad that the Baltimore Ravens didn't pass on a couple of years ago in the first round of the draft that picked number 14 is Kyle Hamilton. And Ryan Mink, he, he got this from PFF, but he listed everywhere that Kyle Hamilton played last year. The snap counts at the different positions. And this is what it was. At wide cornerback, he played five snaps. At outside linebacker, he played 58 snaps. At strong safety, he played 89 snaps. At inside linebacker, he played 147 snaps. At free safety, he played 301 snaps. At slot cornerback, he played 465 snaps. When y'all hear me talk about Kyle Hamilton, and I say this man can literally do everything, he can literally do everything. That's why he needs to be a Baltimore Raven for the entirety 
of his career. The man is like that. He's going into year three. After this year, he's going to be eligible to, to be paid. Whenever it's his time to get paid, he is going to make a crazy boatload of money. He's going to reset whatever the market is as safety in the secondary at that time. But he will definitely deserve it because Kyle Hamilton is one of one. We're all super excited about Derrick Henry being the Baltimore Raven and everything that he's going to bring to the team. But something that we often hear about Derrick Henry, how will he be now that he's over 30 years old? Will he still have a lot left in the tank? Can he still go? Can he still be as consistent as he's been? But a big question to ask yourself is how does he even reach the level of consistency that he's at? How did he even get there? Well, the Athletic, they highlighted some of his eating regimens and that boy he don't mess around it says Derrick Henry financial advisor Pete Kodos estimates Henry spends 240,000 240,000 yearly on body maintenance which includes employing a personal chef who prepares all of Henry's meals Henry eats no fried foods no gluten no dairy and no artificial sugar. Boy, that's a lifestyle right there. But, but hey, you spending 240K on it, then, hey, I, 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 you got it, man. But anyway, continuing, it says, during the season, he doesn't eat his first meal until 4 or 5 p.m. and eats only one other meal, usually around 8 p.m. Wow, that boy doing some IF, that intermittent fasting going crazy. He said in the offseason, his first meal is around 1 p.m. When he does eat, he consumes nearly enough for a pride of lions. I probably eat like three chicken breasts, some rice and broccoli. Then I have some gluten-free pancakes, scrambled eggs, diced potatoes, home fries, and some steak. So now th this makes sense why Derrick Henry is a monster. Because he is literally a monster. He eats like a monster. He plays like a monster. He built like a monster. But I'm glad that we got some clarity on it. Before we continue, special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons and all the Team Keep It Clean channel members as well. If you would like to become either one, a channel member, you can click the join button. And if you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids. And if you don't want to, it is A-OK. -okay. I still love you. Just make sure you're leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel and you turn the notifications on so you don't miss a single upload. Now, we got a question from a special Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Raven Pride. Let's see what he had to say. He said, hope you and the family are well as well as the new member to Team Keep It Clean. Hey, I appreciate you. He said, I just had one question. Can EDC realistically make a trade for Ayuk? I say give up your first round and second round pick. Ooh, oh, you ain't playing. Uh, if the organization really wants to get to the promised land, go get your disciple. Thanks for taking the time to read my question and much love to Team Keep It Clean. So, could they realistically make a trade for Ayuk? They could, for sure. They, they definitely could make that happen. But something, and shout out to my guy Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens. We had the pleasure of being on his show a few days ago, and we were having a conversation, and he brought up a really, really good point. He talked about how, yeah, the Ravens could make the trade for Brandon Ayuk, but when it comes to the contract, they could do it. They could make it happen. They could move some money around and whatnot, but... How would signing a Brandon Ayuk to a contract extension? That's why for me, like, I honestly wouldn't even mind if the Ravens got Brandon Ayuk and only had him this year. He was a one-year rental, and then they moved on because if they didn't sign him. I honestly would not mind that. But anyway, how would signing Brandon Ayuk to one of these $25, $30 million deals impact some other players on the team we know are great fits already with the team and like Tyler Linderbaum, but then Kyle Hamilton, because how would that impact his contract that he has coming up? And again, like we mentioned earlier in this video, it's going to be top of the line money. It's going to be top of the market money. So if you were to bring on a Brandon Ayuk, would you have to lose a Tyler Linderbaum? Would you have to lose a super duper Kyle? If that's the case, then I don't think it would be worth it. Next question came from my guy, The Veil. He said, hey, what's up? I love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Your updates keep me locked in with the Ravens. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. He said, question. I know we're looking for that wide receiver and free agency. I don't know if it'll happen, but what do you think if the Ravens move likely to wide receiver and make him our Anquan Bolden? No, I wouldn't want them to do that. Leave him where he is as a tight end, as a dynamic tight end at that uh, you could, of course, flex him out wide and whatever, move him out there from time to time. But he's a tight end. He does really, really good at tight end. And I wouldn't want the Ravens to be like, all right, well, I, I wouldn't want them to sort of try to cover up 
that wide receiver thing by trying to move him over there. Keep him where he was at, but you could still add somebody. But something that I see the Baltimore Ravens doing, and I think a lot of us see the Baltimore Ravens doing this, um, with their situation at wide receiver right now, there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, Rashad Bateman certainly got to prove himself. That's a big question mark right now. How is he going to be? We could definitely see the Ravens uh, incorporating Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely in the offense uh, even more. Like uh, Mark Andrews is already a huge part of the offense. When Mark Andrews is not in the game, then Isaiah Likely is a huge part of the offense. Zay Flowers is as well. He's going to have Derrick Henry. But with the questions that wide receiver, and to just sort of alleviate pressure off of Bateman too, to sort of ease Bateman on in there. Now, we hope that Bateman just from jump, he goes off. We're hoping for the best for him. But I can see the Baltimore Ravens really relying on those two tight ends a lot more moving forward. So I would say no to moving Isaiah Likely to wide receiver. If you're going to get a wide receiver, get a straight up wide receiver. Don't move a tight end to the position. Get somebody that plays the position and has been playing the position for a while. I know Isaiah Likely used to be a wide receiver a while ago, but he isn't anymore.